Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Taco, back on those pandemic projects, and I'm working on one today that a viewer sent in. This one belongs to Michael. Michael and I have been uh, following each other on Facebook, uh, where you can follow me as well. And um, Michael has sent in a reel that I've never seen before. He had asked me if I work on this type of reel. Well, I work on baitcasters, but I've never seen the Penn Sargus 64 LP. LP, I'm assuming, is low profile. And uh, interestingly enough, when I went to Mystic Parts, I couldn't even find the, um, the schematic for that. But uh, Michael was kind enough to provide that uh, schematic. And I would recommend that if you're starting to work on any of these reels, by all means, you should go pull a schematic if you're not familiar with the reel. And I'm not. So this will prove to be interesting. So play along with me. We're just going to do a basic cleaning and tune-up on this one. It seems to be working fine. Everything is uh, nice and smooth and that says it's a seven ball bearing wheel so let's uh let's go ahead and do what we normally do which is to take it apart so i'm going to start by removing the handle and if you're just working on a reel that you've never worked on before i recommend a couple of things one of them is that uh, schematic that i showed you there and the other one is to take pictures along the way because you're going to be unfamiliar with the reel you may not remember a certain sequence or or part or, or orientation or any of that stuff that uh, came off the way that uh, it should and you got to reinstall and you wonder gee what happened here so we've just removed the handle the handle uh, nut cap and the retaining uh, cap now we're going to remove the uh, drag adjuster the drag adjuster has a little clip inside of it that's making that noise that you hear it's a little V-shaped clip that's right here and take that off and I like to put those in the way that they came out and then we have two tension washers these tension washers are concave they uh, they have to do with the sensi sensitivity of the drag adjuster so in this case these are face to face I like to note that there's a space in between down below here hard to see on the camera but uh, Again, they're, uh, uh, they're conical, they're not, uh, not flat washers. You can put them face to face, you can put them backwards, you can see the spacing more that way if you put them backwards. And you can nest them where there's no space at all. And that uh, all has to do with the sensitivity of the, the drag adjuster. So I'm going to put those into my parts tray. If I didn't mention a parts tray before, I always use a parts tray here. And then there's one little shim washer here on the top. And that shim washer is kind of a bearing shield but uh, I'm going to put that in the stack as well. Okay, so for the novice eye, if we didn't have that, um, that little schematic over there, it would look like there's just two side plate screws, but if I, I believe if I've read the side uh, schematic properly, there's actually three holding the side plate on. We'll go ahead and take these off. Now these are pretty small Phillips head screws. I have a small number one Phillips head screwdriver which seems to be doing the trick, but don't be afraid to use uh, micro screwdrivers if you find yourself where the, it just seems like it's a little bit uh, too fat. You don't want to strip the, uh, the screws out of the chassis, uh, but unfortunately a lot of the time that darn screw is in so tight that you lose the leverage with these things. But uh, if you need to, uh, don't be afraid to use these. It'll preserve the grooves in the screw. And it'll uh, make your life a whole lot easier reinstalling rather than buying a new part. So there's something I always notice, and I just noticed it here. The screw that came out from the real seat is longer than the screw that was in the side plate here. So you got to note these types of things when you're doing the install. The larger one goes in the real seat, the smaller one... Uh, goes up by the worm and that's a good place we to take pictures to understand that okay if it was just that we would just be pulling this off now but it's not according to the schematic so we got to take the side plate off this one's always a Sherlock Holmes regardless of whose reel it is you always wonder how that side plate comes off particularly to the novice if you look at it you don't see any screws there you don't see any screws on the back side so what in the world's going on <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, pen reel, you push the button in, and it's just a brief turn. So push that pen button in. You'll see it can depress. 
I may not have these. There you go. And then it just kind of clicks up like that, and that releases a lock to enable you to pull the side plate off. There you go. So this is a magnetic uh, controlled cast. It has a ball bearing in the back here. That's the little lever you saw me move there on the back side. And that lever sits into this little groove here, which locks the side plate in place. Now before I get too much further, I'm going to take some fishing reel oil, in this case Reel X. I'm just going to flood that bearing. And again, we're just doing a base tune up there. Then I'm going to put that side plate in, and now we can remove the spool. The spool's got a bearing on this side, so let's do the same. Flood that. And I suspect I'm going to look at this. I don't see the I don't see his bearing in this side of the spool. I see the brake assembly, but looking at these schematics, I do not see a uh, a bearing there. So we're going to just let that one go. All right. So now we look in here, and sure enough, up top. There's another screw here, and that screw is the back end of the case. So we have one here, one here, and one up top from inside the case. So don't go prying anything. Don't go doing anything because you think maybe you got it, but you didn't. Make sure that you study these things. Otherwise, you're going to crack the case in a different way. All right, and we can get this one out. And again, I like to look and note I've put two of these in so far, and this one, I don't think you can put this one in wrong because it has a thicker diameter screw to it, but just to notice that. Now we should be able to remove the case. Sure enough, look at that, it just comes right off. And coming off with that assembly was a uh, cap washer, and then we have a collar in here, and then we have the anti-reverse clutches in here as well. So. Just set that assembly aside for a moment. Just going to run a, a little cotton swab in here, clean that up. I believe this uh, is a bearing as well. There's seven of them in here. They're hiding all over the place. So I'm going to flood that with the uh, the case while I go about the rest of this. And now I'm going to take the assembly out in the order it came off. So we're going to pull all of this up. We're going to pull the last of the washers. These are HT100 washers, so nothing much is going on in there. So this is kind of a typical scene of what you would uh, be familiar with. You've got the, the big gear driving the little gear, which makes it high speed. You have the two springs that are holding the, the case so that when you um, press in or press down, you'll see it here and operate. I'm going to pull the springs off first before I show you. They shoot. When you press down on this, you'll see the clutch assembly is going to move. It's going to press this out. It's going to pull this off of the shaft of the spool so that you have free spool. And then when you go to trip, well, the trip's not on there right now, but when you go to trip back, the trip is going to be here. It's going to be this big star that we took off. It'll sit like that. And when you go to trip, It'll throw it back, pull this in, and operate properly. So let's just uh, hit this with some WD-40 here just to clean it up. It's a pretty clean reel underneath. You don't really need to go crazy. You don't need to take the clutch assembly out unless it's broken. You do need to uh, put a little bit of oil onto the, the throw here, which is the release button. And you do need to get some of the older grease out of there in the channels. And we'll do that right now before we reinstall. All right, a nice clean uh, reel. Looks like a nice quality reel all around. All right, so I had to put the reel down for a moment and uh, answer a phone call, but uh, I'm I may be a little bit out of sync with this, and I apologize if I am. Uh, I'm trying to pick up where I left off. So, on this yoke, there's two sides to the yoke. There's the uh, bubble side and the flat side. The flat side's going to go to the back and the spool gear with the, uh, the notches in it is going to go to the back. We're going to check the front of this, make sure that it's uh, got uniform teeth, which it does, and uh, I'll put a little bit of grease on that. 
and then we're going to reinstall that. And again, sometimes it's a little bit difficult for me trying to keep the camera angle and my big hands out of the way. Okay, that's the way that one sits. I have a couple of pieces here because I started on the, uh, the bridge and I don't think I got the uh, got that done uh, when I was on camera. So I took a couple of pieces. There's one more screw left here before we go to reassembly. Uh, see if you can get it with the small one. Man, they really do torque those down. So there's actually four screws here. There's the side plate screw, then there's this little one, and then there's two more on this side that hold that assembly in place. And you need to take that assembly off like that so you can get to the pawl to go do the lubrication of that. So you're really basically taking this whole darn reel apart if you do the service properly. So I'm just going to remove the pawl cap here. And I'm just going to put a drop of oil in there. I run a drop of oil on the worm gear as well. And then we just button this back up. I'm in a danger zone here right now because I got a lot of parts sitting on my uh, desk and that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. But uh, I did want to show you how to do this and I didn't want to overlook it if I had uh, gotten out of sequence in that last one. Okay, this just simply comes back in then. Put the small screw on the top. The second one on this side happens to be the case screw. And then there's two screws on the other side, which I'll show you reinstalling. These two screws belong in this side. They're very small, flat, uh, beveled screws. One belongs up top here. The other one belongs below. Okay, then we can go reassemble the the basic, uh, the basic uh, works of this reel. So we have a um, click ratchet that's uh, going to be the, the trip lever, as you saw before, for the, uh, the free spool. Then we had an HC100 drag uh, washer on top of that. Now we, uh, we've cleaned out the, uh, the main gear. And again, if I'm out of sorts a little bit, I apologize. That phone call. Uh, came and I jumped at it and unfortunately I may or may not be right here. But clean it out with uh, with steel wool, make sure that it's uh, clear. Clear. This one's clear, it's just tarnished. Check the teeth of the main gear and go ahead and go put some grease on it. You don't have to put it on all the teeth. And these are Carbon Tex washers. So they Carbon Tex, you have the option of um, putting grease on them or not. I don't put grease on Carbon Tex, so we're just going to leave those go. The sequence is a Carbon Tex, a round washer with the uh, rectangular internals. Then the middle one is the eared washer with the circle, and then the top one in this case is got the rectangle, but it's uh, it's got an indentation and a and a protrusion on it and that protrusion belongs up. That's the cap washer. So first one then is the carbon tex. Now we go with the rectangle. Second carbon tex. Eared washer which sits into the groove in the main gear as such. Carbon tex. Cap washer. Okay. Two springs belong on that post on each side. I took them out so they wouldn't shoot before. You may recall that. Make sure you put them in before we reinstall. Last part then is the sleeve that goes inside the uh, anti-reverse. And then we have the uh, the cap. We've already uh, oiled the bearing there. Work that over the uh, uh, clutch, the roller clutch, the anti-reverse. Then you should have a nice snap like that. Remember, you have a small screw that goes up top here. I'm going to use the micro screwdriver for this. Down below we have a longer screw. 
and again, it's, I don't believe you can mess these up because that shaft on the internal screw for the, the case, which I have on the towel there, is a wider diameter. So uh, I can't go in this screw hole here. Then the last one then goes inside the, the case there. So we're in good condition with this one. Before I go too much further, I want to press down on the free spool release to make sure it's tripping which it is. It's doing exactly what it should do. Nice smooth operation. And then we come back now and we just go opposite the way that we took these pieces out. So we had a little uh, shim over that uh, clutch there. We have the two tension washers face to face. Go ahead and put those on. We had that little click assembly. We had another two washers inside here. And again, if you had questions about that, you could go to the schematic, uh, which Michael so generously uh, supplied, because I was having a dickens of a time trying to figure that out. And then you put the, uh, the adjuster knob on. Now be careful with these. They're not the most durable things. And between the shaft and the uh, the drag adjuster itself. You can cross strip that and if you cross strip it uh, you're out looking for parts. Okay that looks right. I'm just going to grab a handle here. Underneath the handle there's a little tension washer. All right, you can hear that uh, that click is working now. Okay, so we're good with that. Spool, we've oiled the bearing. I didn't see a bearing on this side. I guess if you did, you could go ahead and pull these three um, little screws here. These got springs and all kinds of things in it. I would tell you uh, by design, it's probably not a thing that needs to be done. So we're just gonna let that go. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease onto the shaft here. and clear some of that off. There's some a little bit of grease on there. Let's go put fresh grease on to the shaft. Put that spool in. You don't do anything with the magnets. The case is clean. So the final part of the assembly then is just to kind of set that up the way it came out. Lock it in place. Grab that handle then. And that handle's got a little shim washer on it. Back that over the top. Go for the cap washer. And we'll be able to give it a test drive. And if we did all of this right, uh, Michael have a nice reel to go take fishing. When we can. This, uh, this pandemic has really got us all kind of waiting anxiously to, to be able to go out there and, and do some fishing. But in the meantime, uh, it's a good time to go tune up your reels, and if you have one of these, you've just seen how to tune it up. If you're thinking about buying one of these or see one come up for sale, and I, again, I was unfamiliar with this one. So uh, they may not be that common that you'll see them come up for sales, but if they do and you're, if you're interested in it, it looks like a nice reel. And uh, I'm sure it'll have a long time and lots of use left. So let's give it a spin then. Oh, we can get a nice little reel going there. We have an adjuster here for spool control, for cast control. You can tighten or adjust depending on the speed that you want. You also have the adjuster over here with the mags. Uh, I think it's set at one right now, but you can uh, increase or decrease the, the mags in terms of the anti-backlash from the spool there. And you can see the difference that, that makes between all the way out and all the way in in terms of the spin. So. There you go, the Penn Sargus. It's the uh, 64 LP low profile. Nice smooth reel. And I'm sure Michael's gonna enjoy taking this one fishing for a long time to come. So with that, uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like it. If you wanna see more of this type of thing, please subscribe. Uh, if you have a reel that you're working on and you're stuck or have questions, please leave the, the question in my comments section. I'll be happy to try and get back to you to help you overcome my particular service issue you may have. 
And uh, if you have a reel that's broken but you're not interested in doing the service and you want me to uh, work on that for you, well, by all means, drop me a note on my email, which is uh, at the end of this video. So with that, uh, stay well, stay healthy, get through this uh, pandemic here, and I uh, look forward to uh, the fishing that you're going to do in the future. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.